June 2018, Dior launched a Backstage Pro collection. Now this is going to be a more affordable price point collection that is a spinoff from Dior's Summer 2019 Resort Collection. Peter Phillips is the Image and Creative Director for Christian Dior Cosmetics. He is also their resident in-house makeup artist. He did help create and design the 60-piece Backstage Piece Collection to encompass eyes, lips, brushes, as well as face palette. Starting off with Dior's face and body foundation, it retails for $40. It is waterproof, heat resistant, and it will also build up to a medium coverage. It also states that it has a natural luminous finish, which I disagree. When I went to Sephora's website, it states that it has a matte finish and it is for all skin types. So I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to my actual experience with the foundation. I did jot down Peter's vision for the face and body foundation. I would like to read that to you. He states it's his key product. I wanted 16 different levels of intensity but above all six different skin tones. He goes into detail about stating rosy, olive, yellow, beige, etc. In total that makes 40 colors, allowing every woman to find the shade that best matches her complexion. He states that the finish is natural and glowy. It has a sheer but buildable hydrating formula, which is ideal for layering. You only need a dot or two for the milky formula to give a light wash of coverage that will help cover imperfections without covering your freckles. Next up is the Glow Face Palette. The face palette retails for $45. It has three highlighters and then the fourth shade is a darker shade that can be used as either a bronzer for fair skin or a highlighter for deeper skin tones. Next up is the Contour Palette and that retails for $45. Now, according to Peter, he states the word easy. Let me quickly read this to you. He states that their contour palette is featherweight and it has multi-sculpting powders, meaning it will vanish into your skin. So it's not something that's going to look very harsh, something that's going to be difficult to blend. He also states that the palette was designed in conjunction with model Bella Hadid. And Bella is actually one of their signature models. So she does represent Dior. Within the contour palette, there are two luminous shades to kind of help sculpt and add some dimension. And then there's two matte shades in the uh, palette. Next up is Dior's lip palette which retails for $49. Within the lip palette you're going to have neutrals and various finishes of glossy, satin as well as matte. Next up are two eye palettes. Each eye palette retails for $49. Now there's two of them. There is a warm based one or I would say like neutral and then there's a cool based eyeshadow palette. What makes these eyeshadow palettes unique is in the top row of each color combo the very first pan is actually like a creamy eyelid primer so you don't need an eyeshadow primer you can just stick your finger in or take a brush and apply the very first pan as your first starting point clean up your eyelid and get it ready for the next colors for the next shadows rounding up the backstage collection there is a variety of eyeshadow brushes face brushes I think it's about 18 I think I wrote down 13 brushes so everything to do your face and then there are some new eyebrow products but they're actually powders so there's a light kit and there is a dark kit so that rounds up the backstage pro collection before I visited my local Sephora to look at the actual collection I was able to get one of those deluxe size promo code uh, samples here for the backstage. So I did pick up six in and that's the one I first started out testing before I actually went into the store and picked up the five. So there are six in on my skin tone. As you can see on the jawline and so forth, it is once it is dried, it does look darker than my actual skin tone, but it is slightly darker. It's not anything where it's very, it's very dark and apparent. So day one, 
as usual, I do not wear it with any primer. I want to see how it's going to react to my skin. Am I going to have any type of an allergy? How is the foundation going to work with my skin oils? It did not, well, six in, did not turn darker, so darker in appearance where it's just so alarming per se. It did not look orange. It did not look gray. It just looked fine throughout the day. I'm keeping in mind that this foundation is supposed to build. So from light to medium coverage and also, before I even read on Sephora's website, I'm thinking in my mind that the foundation is going to have a luminous, like a dewy type of appearance on my skin. I'm also comparing it, and I can't help it, but it's, it's the one that I love for life. Like double digit years I've been using and it's the MAC face and body. So it has a lot to live up to if you're going to be right there with my uh, face and body. So all that's going in my mind on day one. Light layer on top or a little bit more. I'm kind of like judging it to really see the pigment level and we'll build up in areas that I would need it. I knew it wasn't going to cover dark marks or hyperpigmentation, but I just wanted to see how far it could go before I would have to pull in any concealer. The more I would add on more, the more I noticed that it was looking a bit dry on my skin. Now, I'm thinking, okay, my face is already moisturized. It's not medium, medium coverage, but I am layering it and it's what I noticed. Very close up in the magnifying mirror. I also used this foundation in multiple ways. So I did use it with my fingers. I used it with a brush. I used it with a sponge. I prefer to use my fingers when it comes to this particular foundation. There is a reason why. When I would use the brush, I feel that just the building up and the more I would build up with the brush, the more it would start to look drier on my skin. And when I use the term dry, to me, when I would look in the mirror and up close, it looks like, I hate to say it, but like a thin layer of a mask. It looks dry, which I'm not like that. I like, I, well, I've said it, I don't like to look dry. Combo skin types, you're probably gonna like this as well, combo to oily. because again, this is something that's gonna give you that appearance of a foundation matte-wise that you're probably looking for. It's when you go to the dry skin, very dry, normal to dry like me, or you just do not want a matte appearance. This is a foundation I feel that we're gonna need to tweak but it's a foundation that you're going to need to tweak if it's what you really like i'm tired of matte i want a dewy foundation launch actually what i wanted it to appear like is the mac face and body i wanted it to look like skin like how it's marketed it's kind of almost in a sense marketed as two ways because how Peter Phillips is marketing it is something what in my mind I'm thinking this is going to be like you know natural skin like appearance maybe have some slight luminosity to it like Mac face and body and I'm gonna like that but then when I'm really trying it out or even reading some other reviews or looking on Sephora I get something different so just something to keep in mind when it comes to the actual shape shades themselves. The best I can tell you when you're looking at the neutrals, the warm or the warm peach is to go by your undertone. This is a face and body foundation that is going to be your undertones. You really need to nail that undertone down. Let's first look at the warm peach. Warm peach to me is what I actually thought it was. It's a very warm pools very warm shade. It also pulls orange on my skin tone. So if you have a lot of warmth in your skin, even if you have going towards yellow, you're going to like this. So yellow and that red base, I think it's going to be just depending. It's going to kind of teeter depending on your skin tone. So go more towards that. If you are true neutral, you don't lean towards one or the other. You're right smack in the middle you're gonna be best probably suited in the neutral category. If you are a true warm, golden undertone, you're gonna be best suited in the warm category. So definitely make sure you get your undertone down right, because this is gonna be a foundation that will definitely show, even though it's thin texture, even though it is a sheer coverage, it's going to show through. After seeing the rest of the collection in person at my Sephora, I wasn't impressed with 
anything I saw. First with the contour palette, it's a contour palette that only comes in one shade. So that will tell me this, the shade is going to be marketed towards probably the majority of the most popular skin tone out there, which is right there in like the medium uh, spectrum, light medium skin tone. Also finding out that it is worked in conjunction with Bella, it is going to be a palette that's going to be geared towards again her skin tone. There is one shade in the contour palette that would show up on me on my uh, if I wanted to contour my face but I don't see the justification of spending such a high price for one little pan when I have I have other contour powders at home that I do enjoy. Same with the lip palette. I actually have lip palettes already at home. I am happy with the formula. I'm happy using them. So I knew I wasn't looking like in the market to add in a lip palette. I also don't want to use my finger, to be honest. With my lip palettes, I use a brush and I don't mind taking it with me. And my lip palettes actually have a mirror so that I can touch up. And the lip palette's going to be based on you. What type of a makeup user are you? Is this a palette that you're actually looking to add into your collection? You're comfortable using your fingers, all these different colors, all these different finishes, you know, would that work for you? Only you know that. Last is the actual eyeshadow palettes. Again, looking at both the shades, I wasn't impressed. There are shades I already have in my collection, but again, with the price tag, based on what I am seeing here, it wasn't anything that was just drawing me in. They're very neutral based, light tones as well. Again, this is going to be a personal preference, whether it's the warm palette or the cool palette. I knew for sure I wasn't going to get the cool tone because those shades just didn't look like they have a lot of pigment to them. So I feel that those palettes, the, based on the level of the pigment in the shadows, are probably definitely going to be best suited for somebody with very fair skin. My Sephora did not have the brushes, so I couldn't really look at that, but I'm not in the market for Dior brushes. However, I did like the eyebrow powder. I do have my Anastasia eyebrow powder, which I use often, but it's nice to know that here's another option as well. I am disappointed in overall the, the collection as a whole because you have the foundations at 40 it's being hyped up everyone can use it but then when you look at the other items it's kind of like oh thank you for tossing me a foundation now what else can I use oh I really can't use everything else unless I fall in this skin tone I can't use the contour palette unless I look like Bella I can't use um, the eyeshadows because you know it's gonna show up on fair skin I can use the eyebrow but you know we have all types of eyebrow everywhere you know big deal my point is if you have a, if you're inviting everybody to the party at least have all these little side dishes and everything that can kind of accommodate you know different tastes different uh, menu options for the meat eaters the carnivores the uh, vegans and so forth you see what I mean gluten allergy have something for as many people as possible don't just invite me to the party and say okay sit down but you're not gonna eat so definitely six series is too dark for me. So I'm not going to continue on with that. And I'll finish up the five since I have it, but I'm definitely going to be adding in my MAC face and body. This is truly something that offers the skin like appearance. I can build it up work in section it's it's watery you got to shake it up but i mean this is truly what i was looking for and so far from the face and bodies that i have used nothing so far has came to that level that's it those are my opinions and my experience with the dior backstage collection specifically the face and body foundation but i do hope the uh, video footage the pictures of the other products the swatches and so forth has been helpful for you in case there's other areas other items you are interested in perhaps picking up thank you very much for stopping by and watching i do always appreciate that have a wonderful day or evening and as always i'm going to see you in the next video goodbye everyone